Our campaign against unstunned slaughter is very much still underway and I really want to thank everyone who has gotten involved so far. If you haven't got involved so far and you would like to, go to forbritain.uk slash halal. You'll find a, a, a huge amount of information, absolutely excellent um, resource, forbritain.uk slash halal. And I want to thank uh, people who've handed out thousands of leaflets that have uh, been distributed so far. And also our members and supporters who have written to their MP, written to the local school, and let us know the results. Now, I have so many uh, responses sent to us. Thank you so much. So I won't be able to get through them all. But I do want to take you through one this morning, which is from a, a minister's response. So this was sent to me by Sarah, who wrote to her MP, who in turn wrote to the relevant minister, who wrote back to that MP. So I want to read you, well, first of all, uh, I'm not going to read the letter in full, but I will link to it below, the letter we sent, th that we asked our members to send. And in it, we asked them to confirm uh, whether or not they believe it's an infringement on religious freedom to forcefully, and it is forcefully because it, there's no choice, uh, feed halal, for example, and it is halal, kosher is not uh, served up in schools in this way, to serve halal to, say, Christian children. Uh, and the fact that this meat comes with a blessing from a, the Islamic God may cause theological moral problems for devout Christians. And whether or not they believed that this was an infringement on the religious liberty of the Christian parents. We asked very specific questions of this. Uh, asking very specific questions I like to do because it, it's a glaring highlight in their response when they refuse to answer that specific question. So let me get to the email, uh, the email response from Theodore Agnew, who is the Parliamentary Under Secretary of State for the school system. And he writes, thank you, thank you, etc. He does reply, he does say, I am replying as the minister responsible for this policy area. So that's quite clear. Here's the letter. The government encourages the highest standards of animal welfare. We would prefer all animals to be stunned before slaughter. I actually had an interesting chat with one of our members, Matthew, about this recently. We would prefer all animals to be stunned before slaughter. Prefer. Is that it just it doesn't get much weaker or more cowardly than we would prefer. It's almost a well, we would like people to, to not uh, engage in barbaric cruelty. But you know, what are you going to do? Uh, it's such such a cop out. And as Matthew pointed out in that uh, interesting discussion that we had, they're basically doing the same thing when it comes to FGM or child marriage or all the other horrific abuses. Well, we would prefer if this didn't happen. But what are you going to do? So the next sentence tells us more. We also respect the rights of Jews and Muslims to eat meat prepared in accordance with their beliefs. And again, as Matthew pointed out, uh, what about the rights of Muslims to marry their children in accordance with their beliefs? You know, where does this end? Where does respect for their beliefs end? Because people have different beliefs uh, and some of those beliefs are criminal offences in Great Britain. So where does respect end and the law begin? Good question. One we're not going to get an answer to. It goes on. EC Regulation 1099-2009 sets down the welfare standards for animals at the time of killing, including regulations specifically regarding animals which are slaughtered without stunning. In addition to these EU-level requirements, the government has adopted stricter national regulations for animals that are slaughtered without stunning, which provide them with more extensive protections than the EU regulation. These are set down in the Welfare of Animals at Time of Killing, England Regulations 2015. I'll get to those in a minute. Now remember, this is a uh, this is a, a school provision minister. This is what he goes on to say. Regarding the provision of halal meat in schools, schools may consider providing both halal and non-halal food or ensuring that dishes are clearly labelled to allow pupils to select the appropriate choice. Head teachers, governors and their caterers are best placed to make these decisions regarding school food provision. 
In doing so, we expect schools to act reasonably, taking into account religious, cultural and dietary needs and working with parents to make appropriate arrangements. Now, we already know that parents have been accused of racism, Islamophobia, bigotry, etc., etc., for objecting to the provision of halal meat. But look at the difference in language here. From we prefer animals to be stunned without slaughter, we get to we expect schools to act reasonably and take culture into account. Is that acting reasonably? Uh, very vague, very ill-defined. But the difference in language there, we prefer versus we expect, is quite significant. It goes on to say, schools should consult with parents when making changes to school food provision. We already know that uh, parents are told that their school is becoming halal only and uh, many have been called Islamophobes for objecting. So uh, we schools should consult with parents when making changes to school food provision and ensure parents have access to information on the food provided. This bit particularly, um, I don't know if laugh is the right <laughs> reaction, but it, you, you, you can only laugh sometimes. If parents are not happy with the food provided by the school, they can take it up with the school and consider using the school's complaints policy. So the Secretary of State for School Provision is washing his hands of this entirely, doesn't answer the question we asked about freedom of religion and freedom of conscience, for example, for people who object on animal welfare grounds. No answer to these questions at all. Uh, we prefer animals to be stunned. We expect culture to be considered. And if the parents don't like it, well, take it up with the school. What do I care? And he finishes with, we do not routinely collect information about the types of meat schools are buying and serving. In their schools, meals uh, service. Uh, it's, it's exhausting. It really is. These politicians are so weak. But let me get on to the uh, piece of legislation that he referred to, in which he says gives greater protections to animals um, than EU regulations do. And this is the welfare of animals at the time of killing regulations. So, it does nothing, nothing at all. And I, of course, will link to, to this below. It absolutely does nothing to protect animals other than to make sure that a bovine animal, which in our case uh, will be a cow, uh, is standing upright in a restraining pen when its throat is cut. So you will see, the, and I will link to this below as well, and we used uh, stills from these videos for our campaign, that the cow when being slaughtered, <coughs> sorry, I've got a cold, the cow when being slaughtered uh, is held in this contraption, unable to, to move, but still fully alert, awake and conscious while its throat is cut. That's what the greater protection of the welfare of animals at the time of killing regulations provide. And it asks that the knife be nice and sharp. That's it. That's, that, that's their answer. That's the greater protection they provide. I, you know, I, it's, it's, sometimes you're lost for words. Um, and once again, I, I'm somewhat lost for words. We asked specific question to the minister responsible. He avoided those questions. He put, we pointed out that our concern was that the animal was alert and awake and conscious at the time of slaughter and this was causing immense and intense suffering for these animals. The response of the minister res uh, responsible for this area sends us some legislation which does nothing to address that particular point. The very point we are raising his answer doesn't address. This is who governs us. They don't feel any need to answer our questions. They produce legislation that does nothing. We have reams and reams of legislation that achieves nothing at all other than to provide excuses and evasion and just flimflam to politicians to throw at people when they raise questions. We deserve better. We need better. One day we will have better because for Britain will provide it. If you care about this, join us. If you want to get involved, forbritain.uk slash halal. Animals have no voice. Let's give them one.